So Ty drops back. He's got time. Ball over the top to Jeter. Caught! Mooney to McVay up the middle. He's got, he's got space. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. That's a touchdown, UCD. That takes their 10th national title. They continue to be the winningest team in Ireland. Uh, and a great, great performance. All three facets of the game. Irish college football is an interesting one to look at. Well, previous countries we have covered like Canada, Mexico, and Japan have complete college leagues. Ireland's version of college football is mixed in as part of a semi-pro league. How does that work? You do not want to miss this one. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm planning to release multiple videos a week this season. Also, let me know which international college football league you want me to cover next in the comment section below. I have so much fun making these videos and learning about other countries' versions of college football. American football arrived in Ireland in 1984 when there was a training session held at Phoenix Park in Dublin. The American Football Ireland, aka the AFI, was also formed that same year and was an entirely volunteer-run national governing body for American football in Ireland and Northern Ireland. The first Shamrock Bowl occurred in 1986 when the Craigavon Cowboys took on the Dublin Celts. The Shamrock Bowl is the championship game for the highest level of American football on the island. The Cowboys would beat the Celts 6-2 that first year. The next major event occurred in 1988 when the inaugural Emerald Isle Classic took place at Lansdowne Road, the event being proposed and arranged by Aidan J. Prendengast, the former president of the AFI, and Jim O'Brien. Great last name. They came up with the idea to attract more attention to Irish football due to the high number of Irish descents in the United States and the popularity of football in the States. The game was thought to be an annual event at first to attract some of the 40 million Americans of Irish descent back to Ireland. The inaugural matchup attracted over 42,000 fans and saw Boston College beat Army. In 1989, it was number 24 Pittsburgh who faced Rutgers at Lansdowne Road, and the Panthers won 46-29, with this matchup only drawing about 20,000 fans. The Emerald Isle Classic is still played today and has attracted over 40,000 fans each matchup. Things are a little different in Ireland compared to other countries we have looked at in the past. There is no specific college league to my understanding, instead there are two levels of football. Senior American football for those 18 and above, and youth American football for those between the ages of 15 and 18. There's also a flag football league for those who are 16 years and above, but we're not going to talk about that today. The IAFL was resurrected in the early 2000s, with them having a full football season in 2001. The Carrefourgus Knights, Dublin Dragons, Dublin Rebels, and the University of Limerick Vikings all participated with the Dublin Rebels winning the Shamrock Bowl. In 2002, the IAFL started to grow with multiple teams applying to join the league in 2003. The same year, an Irish team won the International Cup competition. 2003 saw Cork, Belfast, and Craigavon all join the IAFL, so the league was now up to seven teams. The Knights, Cork Admirals, Dublin Dragons, and Dublin Rebels played in Division I. The Belfast Bulls, Craigavon Cowboys, and UL Vikings played in Division II, which was created to help development teams get competitive game experience. Membership in the IAFL increased significantly and the standards of play was higher than in previous years. That year, Shamrock Bowl had the largest crowd and some major media attention leading to highlights being broadcasted on TV3 in Ireland and Sky Sports throughout Europe. The season finished with the first ever IAFL All-Star Game in which the North defeated the South 7-0. For the 2004 season, IAFL membership reached an all-time high of more than 300 registered players. All teams had bigger rosters, and most of the rookies were in the 17-21 to 21 age group. As of 2020, there are 20 club teams that participate across three divisions. The AFI Premier Division currently has eight clubs competing. The championship game called the Shamrock Bowl is currently held by the Belfast Trojans, and this is the highest club in Ireland as of 2020. AFI Division 1, with seven clubs, is in contention, consists of clubs that require some development to reach the AFI Premier Division level. 
The championship game called the AFI Division One Bowl was won by the Kragavon Cowboys in 2019, who have been promoted to the AFI Premier Division for the 2020 season. AFI Division 2, with five clubs, covers all new teams to the sport or teams still very much in the developmental phase. The championship game called the AFI Division 2 Bowl was last won by the Childera Crusaders in 2019 and consequently also promoted them to the AFI Division 2 for the 2020 season. Along with the rest of Europe, all their clubs play using the NCAA rules with slight modifications to suit the Irish platform. In 2015, the Irish National Program, or better known as the Irish Wolfhounds, was implemented with goals of establishing a program to represent AFI in Ireland at the international level. The Dublin Rebels have the most Shamrock titles with 10 and have won the last two titles since the league returned from COVID. Now you may be sitting and wondering why I'm talking about a semi-pro league if this is a series focused around college football. Well, that's because there are colleges that play in the league like Trinity College, the University of Limerick, and the University of College Dublin. The game is continuing to grow at a high level as well with the popularity of American football in Europe skyrocketing. Due to when the season is played, teams are forced to rotate through players who leave and come back during the summer, but that does not stop the university teams from finding success and making it to the Shamrock Bowl. In the end, Irish college football, semi-pro football, is growing at a high rate and the Division I football game the country hosts every year always seems to be well attended. This series has opened my eyes to how the game of American football has grown over the years and has become one of my favorite series to create each week. What do you think? Which country should I cover next? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.